Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of, law, of iron, to execute them on them the judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Well, with this uh, penultimate psalm in the book of Psalms, we're continuing the series of praise psalms. And if Psalm 148 was the whole universe praising God and then focusing down at the end of that psalm on Israel, this psalm uh, takes that final verse and amplifies it and really reflects on uh, Israel as God's people uh, praising God. And uh, the psalm is really divided into two halves. Uh, the first half is uh, celebration, uh, verses 1 to 5. And uh, here, uh, like we've seen in the last uh, few um, psalms of praise, the focus is, is just very simply on um, God's people praising, uh, praising him. Uh, although there is a new dimension um, in verse 1, praise the Lord, sing to him a new song. And a new song uh, perhaps uh, reflects uh, a new situation. And uh, the second half of the psalm, which we'll see, is, is sort of calling on um, Israel under God to defeat her enemies. So maybe this psalm is kind of designed for that time. So it's a psalm that uh, looks forward to the time when God will come and vindicate his people and establish them uh, over their enemies. Um, verses two to three um, uh, call on Israel, though, to be glad in her maker, even as they sing this new song. Uh, he is their creator. But even the, the descriptions of Israel and then Zion and their king um, point to Israel's special relationship with, uh, with God. Yes, he's the maker. He's the creator of everyone. But as Israel and Zion and um, having God as their king, they, they are in a special relationship with him. And so they're to uh, praise his name with dancing and to celebrate uh, with instruments, uh, something that happens throughout the Old Testament, particularly in times of victory. Uh, think about Exodus 15 uh, following the, the defeat of Pharaoh. Uh, that kind of uh, joyful celebration is reflected there. Uh, verse 5, uh, they're told to uh, sing for joy on their beds. Uh, presumably, um, you know, they're on their beds because they're at peace and uh, ease and so again this is this idea that God has brought them to security and victory so they praise him uh, on their beds uh, in between that in verse 4 uh, it's interestingly interesting verse 2 let Israel be glad in their maker verse 4 for the Lord takes pleasure in his people uh, this kind of wonderful uh, reverse uh, they take pleasure in him he takes pleasure in them and then um, this uh, line in the second half of verse 4 that we've seen throughout the, the Psalms, that it is the humble uh, that God uh, saves. It is those who uh, trust in him and uh, not their own ability uh, to save themselves. So the first half of the Psalm is celebration. The second half of the Psalm strikes a different note, and uh, the emphasis here is on uh, victory. Uh, verse 6, uh, the first half sort of continues uh, the idea of, the, of sorry, the first half of that verse continues the idea of the first half of the psalm. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. But then the second half takes a different turn and two edged swords in their hands. And so God's people are being called not just to praise God, but to bring about the victory uh, that they've been anticipating in the first half of the psalm. And uh, it is um, not just uh, victory. It is verse seven, vengeance and punishment. Um, on those uh, kings and nations and peoples that have uh, opposed God's people to bind their kings with chains, their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written. And, and our mind is cast back to, uh, to, to Psalm 2. The nations rage, uh, God sets his king and establishes uh, Zion as his holy hill. 
So uh, there is this note of um, uh, of judgment that God will uh, judge the enemies of his people. And again, and we, we, we saw this particularly earlier in the Psalter, uh, we, we can sometimes, particularly in the affluent West, where Christianity still has a sort of place in society, we can read this and it possibly makes us feel uncomfortable. Our brothers and sisters in uh, many parts of the world who are under intense persecution would resonate much more um, uh, clearly with the sentiment in this psalm. Having said that, when we um, think of the New Testament, we're reminded that Paul says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not for us to take up arms uh, against uh, the enemies of God. Our, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Uh, yes, we wield the sword, but it's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 10, um, Paul talks about sort of taking captive, very similar language, taking captive, but he does it by reason and argument. And so um, it's not for us uh, to bring about this kind of final judgment. Yes, we anticipate that one day God will bring about this judgment. Uh, for us, uh, we praise God and we take his sword in our, uh, in our hands. And that means that as we praise God, we, uh, we tell people about uh, his word. And we look forward to the victory that he will bring. And as we do it, uh, we sing praise to our God. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank and praise you uh, that you are worthy of praise. Thank you that you are our maker, but thank you even more than that. You take pleasure in your people. Our Father, we uh, thank you too uh, that one day you will bring absolute victory and justice to the universe. Uh, thank you that our role in the meantime, as we wait for that day, is to praise you and to wield the sword of your word as we call uh, men and women to repent and bow the knee to the King of kings, the Lord Jesus. And we thank you and praise you in his name. Amen.